This video is on infective endocarditis. Infective endocarditis is also called as bacterial endocarditis. And there are three layers in the heart, which are the epicardium, myocardium, and endocardium. So this endocarditis mainly affects the endocardium, which is the inner lining of the heart. It is due to an infection caused by bacteria that enters the bloodstream and settle in the endocardium. Infective endocarditis is uncommon, but there are some people who have higher risk, which I will talk about later, they will have greater risk of having it. So if the patient presents with prolonged fever and there is a new murmur heard in the heart, it is endocarditis until it is proven otherwise. Any fever that lasts more than one week in those especially who have high risk who have risk factors must prompt for blood culture. So these are some of the risk factors of endocarditis. For example, the patient had past history of infective endocarditis or rheumatic fever. There are IV drug users, damaged or replaced valve before, having structural congenital heart diseases, and conditions like hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. These are the causes of causative organisms of infective endocarditis. Shrimp viridans is a common cause which consists of more than 35% of the cases. Staphylococcus aureus is also very commonly seen. These are the two main types that are more common. Others include enterococci or hatchet bacteria, which is a group of bacteria which are rarely seen but they can also cause infective endocarditis. Some of the signs of infective endocarditis that we can take note is first look at the vital signs. Most patients, they present with prolonged fever, so we take the temperature to double check, and they have tachycardia, which is increase in pulse rate. We check their hands for finger clubbing, spindle hemorrhage, ocular nodes and germway lesions, which I will show pictures of it later on. On the arms, look for needle marks to suggest that there are IV drug users, where Staphylococcus aureus could have been entered through the skin root due to uh, drug sharing activities, needle sharing activities. And look at the eyes using to look for rough spots, cardiovascular system, auscultate for murmur, and sometimes on the abdomen you can look, you can notice uh, splenomegaly as well. Here are some of the pictures. So we look at the first picture which is the Oslo node. Oslo node is painful. It's a painful pop in fox in the fingers or the toes. Whereas Genway lesion is a painless palma or plantar macules. This two look similar, but then the one is painful, one is not. So to remember, Osler note starts with O, so O for ouch. So Osler note is painful, whereas Genway lesion is not painful. Another picture here is a splinter hemorrhage seen. And rough spots is also a finding in infective endocarditis. It is described as a boat shaped retinal hemorrhage with a pale center. So you can look for these signs to suggest infective endocarditis. These are the investigations we have to do. So the most important is blood culture and sensitivity and echocardiography for infective endocarditis. I'll talk more about it later on in the Dukes criteria. So other investigations include full blood count, high ESR and CRP is expected, you can do urinalysis to look for microscopic hematuria, chest x-ray look for cardiomegaly and ECG we might see some prolonged PR interval to suggest this. So for blood culture and sensitivity we have to do three sets of blood cultures at different times from different sites at the peak of fever. And 85 to 90%, which means most cases, are diagnosed from the first two sets of blood cultures, whereas there are around 10% which are culture negative. For echocardiogram, um, you can look for some findings to suggest for infective endocarditis like vegetations, abscess, or others. I'll talk more about it later on. So this is a criteria that is very important in infective endocarditis diagnosis. 
It's called the modified Dukes criteria. So it's divided into major criteria and minor criteria. For major criteria, it is uh, there are two major criteria, which is positive blood culture or positive echocardiogram. So to say that it is positive blood culture, it is when there is a typical organism in two separate cultures seen. Or the organisms is persi persistently positive cultures, at least two positive cultures drawn more than 12 hours apart, or all the three cultures are positive, or if four or more cultures were taken, the majority is positive, then that means positive blood culture. Whereas positive echocardiogram means when we see some vegetation, abscess, or dehiscence of the post prosthetic valve, or there is new valvular regurgitation. For minor criteria, um, the first minor criteria is predisposition, which are the patient having risk factors like cardiac lesion or IV drug user, fever more than 38 degrees, vascular or immunological signs, positive blood culture that doesn't meet the major criteria, or positive echocardiogram that doesn't meet the major criteria. So these are the major and minor criteria that we have to memorize. So to diagnose, Definite infective endocarditis means there is two major criteria, or one major and three minor criteria, or five minor criteria. This is needed to diagnose definite infective endocarditis. For treatment of infective endocarditis, the main treatment is antibiotic therapy, where it depends on what the culture and sensitivity results are depends on different organisms, we give different antibiotics. And when do we consider for surgery? When there are these conditions, like the patient progresses to heart failure, there is valvular obstruction, repeated emboli, or it is due to fungi, endocarditis, persistent bacteremia, or other stand. These are the conditions where we have to consider for surgery. That's all for this video. Thank you.